Hello everyone, my name is Joe Stanko and I'm the Equine Extension Associate for the Eastern Region of Pennsylvania's 4-H Horse Program. I'd like to welcome you all to the fifth video in our series highlighting our 4-H Equine Knowledge Contests. Again, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that our Equine Knowledge Contests have moved on separate days with our Horse Bowl Contest and Hippology on May 11th and Horse Judging on June 14th. In this video, I'll review some of the performance classes horse judging team members will see in a judging contest. Specifically, I'll explain Western Pleasure and Hunter Under Saddle. Soundness, functional correctness, manners, consistency, and quality of movement in this order of importance are the basic criteria for evaluation. I'll also touch on some of the other performance classes with a more complex scoring system in place like reining, trail, and western riding. Just as a quick review of the performance division, remember in our state 4-H horse judging contest, contestants will see a total of six classes between both halter and performance divisions. Each contest should list in their rules a list of eligible performance classes in order for teams to adequately prepare. Again, I would suggest starting with something simple, maybe a familiar rail class like Western Pleasure or Hunter Saddle, and then move into horsemanship and hunt seat equitation. And from there, you can go into the more complex performance classes using a scoring system like reining, trail, and western riding. Also, keep in mind that some of these classes could follow certain gate calls and ideal performances specific to breed associations. So for example, contestants may see a class of saddlebred country pleasure. Each class has a specific description and purpose what to look for when comparing horses entered to the ideal. And these class descriptions can be found in most rule books and in all judging team manuals. Scoring systems for other classes can also be located in rule books, judging manuals, and there's a lot of class specific videos available that explain everything in detail and also show some examples of different maneuver scores and penalties. Here you'll see a list of all eligible performance classes for our PA 4-H horse judging contest. Remember in the performance division all tack and attire are considered legal and horse's soundness should be judged as seen. Our senior contestants will give two to four sets of reasons on halter and performance classes, and our junior members only give one set of halter reasons. So all horses in Western Pleasure and Hunter Under Saddle classes will be judged at the walk, jog or trot, lope or canter, and back, as well as on all transitions. Horses must work both ways of the ring at all gates and may be asked to extend the jog one or in both directions of the arena. So first, horses must be sound. Soundness is the most important within the basic criteria for evaluating Western Pleasure and Hunter Under Saddle horses. Remember, in performance classes and a judging contest, horses are to be judged as seen. Unsoundness is to be penalized accordingly. In any class, a horse must be sound or disqualified and marked on the bottom of your card. However, you must be 100% absolutely positively sure without a doubt in your mind that this horse is unsound. So obvious lameness may be determined with a head bob at the walk or trot. As seen here in this diagram, usually the horse's head drops down when the sound foot lands and rises up to regular height or higher when the affected foot lands. Second on the list is functional correctness. Western and English horse gates again include a four beat walk, a two beat jog or trot, and a three beat lope or canter. Horses should easily maintain the appropriate gait and not break stride. Horses must also display the correct lead at the loper canter within the direction that they are traveling. The distinctness of this designated cadence or rhythm for each gait to be performed is essential and if in question should be penalized. 
Third on our list is manners. Horses should be mannerly and well broke. Manners can be evaluated by noticing how much assistance is needed from the rider. You can ask yourself questions such as, you know, does the horse require a lot of guidance? Is the rider steering? Is there an excessive amount of contact from the rider's hands to the horse's mouth? Um, or is, is the rider using an excessive amount of leg? It can also be evaluated by how well a horse listens to the commands of the rider. Is the horse a willing performer? Do they hesitate or even display some disobedience? Are they unmannerly, unhappy, or ill-willed? A horse that is inconsistent or high-headed and raises up and out of the bridle, that's a good indication of a horse that's not listening and well broke. Fourth on our list would be consistency. Horses need to be consistent, and there's two ways to evaluate that. Their speed and their frame. When taking into consideration their speed, you should ask yourself, do they maintain the same speed from the beginning to the end of each gate? Do they speed up as they lope or canter more? Or maybe they speed up the second direction of the arena? Or they could also slow down. When considering a horse's frame, a horse should stay within the same correct frame as they travel. Also consider how well a horse can maintain the correct body shape. A horse should have a slight inside bend or a bend in the direction in which they are traveling. An easy way to initially look at a horse's frame may be their head carriage. Or how well a horse carries their head, neck, and top line as they travel. Pictured here you see a diagram of an acceptable head carriage and headset, or a head carriage that's too high or too low, or a headset that's behind the vertical or too far out in front of the vertical. And lastly, you should consider way of going when evaluating Western Pleasure and Hunter Under Saddle. The quality of movement can only be considered in a positive way if the gait being performed has first met all the other elements of evaluation. So horses must first be sound and then be correct without making any mistakes. After that, mannerly and consistent, then the quality of movement can be evaluated and compared. When evaluating the characteristics of a particular gait, you should consider the overall gracefulness and athleticism of a horse. They should have a relaxed, pleasant expression, a strong, steady top line, a certain softness to their movement, consistency and length of stride of that desired gait. Other eligible performance classes in some judging contest will also include Western Horsemanship, Hunt Seat Equitation, Hunter Hack, Reining, Trail, and Western Riding. These classes follow a specific scoring system that evaluates each maneuver or element to a pattern. Exhibitors and horses receive a maneuver or obstacle score per each element, and they could also receive a penalty per each occurrence. Each maneuver score and penalty is then added or subtracted from their base score of 70. Scoring systems for these classes can be located in rule books, judging manuals, and there are also a lot of class-specific videos available explaining everything in detail. In most of these videos, they'll show examples of different maneuver scores and penalties. These scoring systems can take a lot of practice to learn, but again, there's a lot of material available for judging team members. Here are some resources where this material can be found. I'd recommend uh, going through and using our PA4H Horse Judging Contest Rules and Horse Show Rulebook. A lot of different breed associations have judging team manuals as well as their own association rulebook. Uh, also, a lot of other universities or colleges have judging manuals as well. We've also created a public box folder that has a lot of useful materials available for 4-H volunteers, team coaches, and members who are interested in horse judging. There will also be a live knowledge contest question and answer session offered on Wednesday, March 27th at 6.30 p.m. 
in a Zoom meeting room. This is an opportunity for educators, volunteers, coaches, and team members to log in from home or their county extension office and ask any questions that they may have on any of our three knowledge contests. And as always, if you have any questions on any of the topics that we've been covering, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or anyone that you see listed here. Thank you all for watching and good luck.